Thank you all for joining us today. And I'm joined today by Police Chief Paul Hazen and our uh, Public Safety Director, Murphy Robinson. We want to take a few moments to discuss what happened on Friday. We just left a briefing uh, with the Major League Baseball, officials from Major League Baseball, and of course our Colorado Rockies. And as the Major League Baseball All-Star Game events get underway at Coors Field, we want to reassure everyone, we want to reassure our public that there is no ongoing threat and that it is safe to enjoy the festivities throughout downtown Denver. Uh, first of all, I want to extend a very heartfelt, we all want to extend a very heartfelt uh, thank you to a very alert, very astute, and properly trained staff member and the set of employees at the Maven Hotel who saw something and said something. Uh, if we take away anything from this incident in our city, that is the number one lesson for all of us, is if you see something, say something. And for, as a result of that, we are thankful for the reaction of our police department, and I also want to commend them for their swift and very diligent and professional manner in which they responded on Friday as well. Uh, as you know, this took place in a hotel, and without disrupting the festivities, the, the enjoyment of those hotel guests, our police department moved in and abated a pretty serious situation. And I want to thank them for the tremendous work that they did on Friday. Um, let me set the stage for you. As said, this is an active investigation. And I ask you, members of the media, to remember that as you engage in question and answer of our chief and our director of safety. This is an active investigation. And there is some information that we cannot and will not discuss here from this podium, but we want to reassure the public that this is, while it's an ongoing investigation, we believe everyone is safe. We cannot definitively say what this situation is yet, and that uh, absent of all the facts, I urge everyone and caution everyone not to speculate, including the media, on what happened uh, on Friday. Again, the quick thinking of, cons of a concerned hotel employee and the quick response of our Denver Police Department got this under control uh, very quickly. I can't underscore enough how critical it is for the eyes and ears of our residents in helping us to address any form of crime before it happens. I'm going to repeat it again. Please, if you see something, say something. We can all take responsibility for keeping everyone in our city safe, particularly during an event like the All-Star Game. And, but no matter the circumstance, our number one priority is the safety and the well-being of everyone who is in our city uh, enjoying our great city. And what we've got in place for this All-Star Week and every day of this year is a top-notch um, uh, help for all the attendees and fans to have the best and safest experience they can in our city. Uh, the situation, as we saw it this week uh, unfold, uh, was to make sure that everyone was safe and that we got uh, it under control. And I want to assure the public today that our, because of the swift work of our police department, uh, the situation is under control. Um, I want to assure uh, and encourage everyone to come downtown, continue to enjoy these festivities, uh, to do all that you had planned to do while you were in our city. If you're a resident of the city, do all that you had planned to do when you uh, decided to come down and enjoy our uh, great downtown. With that, to get into the specifics to the extent in which he could, he can, I want to bring up our police chief, Paul Paisen, to talk about the situation. Mayor, thank you. Uh, couldn't have said it better. I'm going to give a uh, brief update kind of where we are at this day and time uh, from what we can share. Uh, I think the mayor hit on it uh, very well that uh, there are parts of this investigation that we do not know. Uh, we are committed to trying to figure that out with our partners, both our local partners and our federal partners. Our investigators are working tirelessly to identify exactly uh, what was going on, but we can't share with you information that we don't have. So uh, let me uh, begin uh, here and remind folks of uh, kind of what happened. So on Friday, uh, July 5th, uh, thanks to an astute uh, employee and a, a, a team of, of employees, they uh, alerted the, the police department about a, si a suspicious situation. Uh, our officers, our investigators uh, immediately took action 
and uh, were able to uh, ultimately obtain two search warrants for two of the hotel rooms at uh, the Maven Hotel. Uh, we arrested four individuals uh, for various uh, crimes, primarily uh, the crime of weapon, in, or excuse me, uh, felon in possession of a weapon. We refer to it as previous, uh, or possession of a weapon by previous offender. Um, these individuals were safely uh, taken into custody without incident. We recovered uh, evidence uh, that uh, supports that crime, and uh, we're continuing uh, a very detailed and thorough investigation with our local and federal partners to identify exactly uh, what occurred. Uh, we recognize Right, uh, the fact that it's a Sunday and you all are here, uh, the community concern. Uh, we understand uh, that uh, here we're opening Denver back up for, for business. We have uh, the great fortune of having the all-star game in our beautiful city. And we wanna reassure folks that uh, the safety department, all aspects of the safety department, the police department, the fire department, the Denver Sheriff's Department, our federal partners, the uh, Colorado Rockies, that we have a very detailed and comprehensive plan to ensure the safety of our community members. And uh, what we saw take place on the 5th is the system working. You saw uh, people that uh, saw something, they said something, and the appropriate response took place. Uh, with that, we're uh, committed uh, to ensure that uh, the rest uh, of the All-Star festivities are, are safe, as well as the uh, rest of our city, our community, uh, is safe. And we'll work tirelessly to, to do that. Um, <clears throat> we'll uh, uh, just remind folks uh, the importance of uh, seeing something suspicious, not discounting uh, that, uh, taking action, stepping up uh, and, and doing this. We wanna thank the entire staff there at the Maven Hotel for doing things the right way. I'm also uh, proud of uh, our team and how they responded uh, to this situation. Uh, I'm confident that we are uh, safer today uh, than we were previous uh, to this incident and we're gonna make sure that that continues. Thank you. Before we do a QA, and a uh, we're gonna ask our Director of Safety, Deputy Mayor Murphy Robinson to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, the police chief and the mayor said it well. I'm just extremely proud of the Denver Police Department um, and all the agencies that have been involved with this because it really exemplifies the partnership between community and the police department and the ability to stop any type of threat, whether it be a crime occurring or whether it be uh, something bigger. And I'll tell you, it's really nice to be able to speak to you all about something that was mitigated, something that was stopped in terms of just a crime uh, that would occur, whatever that crime may be. And so I just want to reiterate that this is how it is supposed to work. I know the chief said it, I know the mayor said it, but this is how our system is set up. This is how our police department can really work with the public and making sure that we uh, are investigating everything that you tell us. So when you see something, say something. I know that you've heard that, but I'm going to say it again. I also want to say this. We prepare for this. As a major city in the United States of America, we prepare for these type of incidences. Our police department trains for these type of incidences all the time. You have the best of the best when it comes to the police department in the Denver uh, city and county. And when we talked about doing the All-Star Game, when we talk about doing any of the major events we held, whether it's the DNC, whether it's the former All-Star Games, we always know that threats such as these or any other type of threat, whether it be a medical call, whether it be a uh, call for service of any type, we prepare for those. So I want you all to know that uh, we will always uh, be prepared to handle incidents such as this. We will always be working with our federal and our state partners uh, to make sure that we are working cohesively and continuously with them. But most off, we want you to worry about having fun at the events that we're taking place. 
I would tell you, the chief would tell you, and the mayor would tell you, if there was anything else that we would be worried about in, in terms of these events. And I want to reiterate that you are safe. We want you to come to downtown. We want you to enjoy the festivities that we are having uh, because we truly believe that the system works in this instance. With that said, we'll take uh, question and answer. Chief, uh, my, my name is Carol McKinley. I'm with ABC News. What was it? Uh, did you, at, at the original, uh, you know, when you originally went on this uh, on this uh, case, did you think that it might have been a terrorist act? And what made you think that? I'm wondering how it went down. Were there people in the room when the, the arrest happened? I mean, how did that all unfold? So uh, thank you very much. Appreciate the question. And uh, really, oftentimes when officers respond to any call for service, you're coming into that with a limited amount of information. And uh, here is, uh, you know, without giving any of the specific tactics, uh, we made sure that we were verifying uh, information. And uh, again, commending the uh, staff for their quick work, but uh, our investigators, they uh, identified uh, additional uh, information that uh, helped us get this successful resolution. Uh, you know, being able to arrest individuals that were prohibited from owning firearms. There's a, uh, a reason why this law exists in the first place. There's a reason why uh, their actions in their past have prohibited them from owning a firearm. So being able to safely re resolve a situation like this is uh, something that we're very thankful for. But uh, again, operating on limited information, really uh, vetting that, verifying that, uh, got us to where we were on uh, Friday, July 9th. And uh, this investigation continues, and that's what we'll, we'll do. We'll continue to, uh, as information comes in, verify, vet, make sure that it is accurate. And uh, to the extent possible, we will share that information with our community. Chief, I'd like to ask a slightly more specific question. I, I think we all know we're here because one local news organization reported that um, police sources said that, that you all feared a, quote, Las Vegas-style attack. Did your department ever fear a Las Vegas-style attack? So uh, we're all here to, to talk about our planning. Uh, we're here to talk about an operation uh, that took place on, on the 9th, uh, a successful operation of being able to take uh, four individuals uh, into custody and recover weapons. We don't know what we don't know. That's what the investigation is, is all about. Uh, we need to identify exactly, uh, to the extent possible, why individuals were here in the first place, uh, why proximity to, to downtown, and we don't have those uh, answers. Um, what I can say is that uh, through the, the great work of the staff at the Maven and the great work by our officers, that uh, this is a safer city. Taking uh, guns off the street, taking narcotics off the street uh, is a good thing for uh, the people of Denver and we will continue to work tirelessly uh, to keep our city safe through All-Star Weekend and beyond. Go ahead. Um, Oh, thank you. Will the suspects face federal charges? Do we know that? And why or why not they may face these charges? Um, excellent question. And uh, what I can say is that we are working very closely with our federal partners. If federal charges are appropriate, uh, then uh, that will take place. But uh, we're still so early on in this investigation, we can't say one way or another. But uh, through a thorough, through a detailed investigation through that partnership and collaboration working together is uh, how we will ensure that this is filed in the most appropriate venue. Chief, Wait, what did staff Chief, see that? Wait, right here. Chief, Chief because I know it's only been two days, but are you able to rule out a plot for a mass shooting? And if so, was this some sort of guns for drugs deal? I know there's people who are skeptical that someone you know would rent a room with the view of course field. There's a ton of weapons in there with ammunition and body armor, et cetera, et cetera. So, can you share, like, for sure that this was not a plot for a mass shooting? I think it's a question a lot of people want to know. Uh, this is a question that our community wants to know. This is certainly the question that uh, everybody in this room wants to know. Uh, we uh, don't 
make it a practice to rule things out, right? When you're talking about an investigation, you want to make sure that you're looking at every possible uh, angle. What I can say is that uh, we have recovered weapons and we have recovered narcotics. Anything beyond that, speculating as to what an individual's intent is, they can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, that's what a detailed and thorough investigation hopefully will get us those answers. Did they make and any statements to the effect that they were planning shooting? Have you recovered any written materials of theirs that they were planning shooting? Is there anything to suggest a shooting, a mass shooting? A suicide note? Uh, so, uh, great questions. Uh, those would be details that would be part of an, an investigation. Uh, this, this investigation really has is, is, uh, just gotten started, and uh, there's a lot of uh, questions that we all have. Um, it would be uh, inappropriate for me to share details of an investigation because it could jeopardize uh, the case. And what we're looking for is, first and foremost, we heard it from the mayor, we heard it from the safety director, we are focused on keeping our community safe. And we believe uh, the quick work by the hotel staff and our officers has made us safer. Now, we have to ensure that this case is solid and by sh oversharing of information, we can jeopardize uh, the accountability that is critical uh, in this type of situation. And so, um, if there are uh, ongoing threats, we certainly will uh, communicate that with our community. What I can say is, in this particular situation, we are not aware of any, let me say that again, we are not aware of any ongoing threat related to these individuals or this situation. And if that changes, we will share that information with you. What specifically did staff see that prompted them to call you guys? Uh, little, uh, you know, I, I can just say that uh, the hotel staff is well trained um, and uh, they stepped up in a big way. Uh, they reported suspicious inf information and, and that information was acted upon in a timely manner. Uh, getting into any details or specifics, again, uh, we need to make sure that we're protecting this uh, investigation. This, as, as I stated earlier, uh, folks that are prohibited from owning weapons have weapons and, and have drugs, we want to make, make sure that this is a solid case and uh, we're not going to jeopardize that case by oversharing information. Are you guys looking into any local gang connections? Uh, we are, uh, again, the best way to, to have an investigation is to not rule out and get narrowly focused in, in one way or another. What I am saying is that we are turning over every rock, that we are looking in a broad sense to make sure uh, that we can uh, get to the extent possible as much information about uh, each one of these individuals uh, and, and uh, any kind of uh, answers to the questions that our community and each of you have for us. Yeah, FBI has said that they have no reason to believe that this is this arrest were terrorist connected or connected to a threat to Coors Field or the All-Star Game. Do you have information that they don't have that you're not willing to draw that same conclusion? Uh, we are working very closely with our, our federal partners. Uh, I think I, I and, and maybe I didn't put a fine enough uh, point on this. Um, this situation, these four individuals, uh, this specific incident, uh, we believe that there's not an ongoing threat related to, to this uh, July 9th um, incident. And uh, we are going to follow where the investigation takes us. We're not going to rule out anything and uh, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we uncover all of the information available uh, to the best extent possible. Mayor Hancock, did the, did this go all the way to the White House? Did you have talks with um, with the White House? And I'm, I'm kind of wondering what Major League Baseball was most worried about. Were there any talks about postponing the game? Oh, no. No conversation with the White House and no consideration of postponing the game. I think Major League Baseball and Colorado Rockies obviously were just interested in the information as we could share with them. Uh, to, cons to confirm that uh, it was still a very safe uh, situation, fluid situation, and so we reaffirmed them. Uh, they got the information they needed, and uh, they're playing ball. The activities are going forward. Uh, and let me just say this. I think it's important to note this. If you are speaking with someone as a source who's not directly related to this investigation, it might behoove you uh, to hold on to that information, because what we don't need is alternative facts and misinformation being shared with the public that does not help the investigation or the credibility of this investigation or the public's sense of confidence. And I think that's important. We're not going to mislead the public. 
uh, up here where we as a chief and I think director pointed out very appropriately, when we have something that might uh, be a benefit to the public in understanding their safety uh, in, this, in, in this city and engage in this, these activities, we will share them. Uh, but uh, as the chief said, this is an active investigation. And if someone is sourcing who's not directly engaged in the active investigation, uh, you might want to uh, think twice about that. Let's not mislead the public. I think someone else over here had this. Oh, in the back, I'm sorry. You know, what was uh, Major League Baseball's reaction to not only the situation, but how you guys were able to get it under control? I mean, obviously, this is their big weekend, so, you know. Yeah, so Major League Baseball, um, as they have been for the last a number of months, has been just a wonderful partner. And um, I think, much like you, um, we're just interested in the facts. Um, and we're interested in how we continue to uh, bridge that partnership to make sure that we continue the safety um, of uh, their fans and our citizens and our visitors. And so, um, you know, I think that I can speak for all of us in the city um, and county of Denver, but also um, for the group that, was, that we met with that uh, we will continue our partnership. We will make sure uh, to the best of our ability uh, that the citizens, our visitors, and everyone uh, in the baseball community stays safe and that you should go and enjoy some baseball. Um, enjoy the game, enjoy uh, all that the All-Star game has to offer uh, because it's already ha a fun time. They're, they're having a lot of fun at that. We a couple more questions here. Well, you'll take the last one, one, two, and three. Okay. Um, for Chief Kazan, it's a three-part or should we get them all in there? <laughs> I thought that's not too crazy, but maybe It's a 17-part question. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> probably just four. four. But uh, maybe you can or cannot answer them, but were any of the suspects in any of the hotel rooms when that housekeeper um, you know, came across whatever evidence? Uh, great question. Uh, it's, uh, it would be inappropriate okay. for me to share specific details uh, on this. And then lastly, um, we know that two. <laughs> yeah, I know. I said, I said three, we're going to do two. Um, we know that at least two of the suspects, Richard Platt and the female, have Colorado connections. What about the other two, Ricardo and Gabriel Rodriguez? Are they related or do they also just share the same last name? And again, do they have any Colorado connections? So uh, looking into all of this, this is uh, why, uh, as Director Robinson discussed, why those partnerships are, are so important that uh, if leads take us out of state or out of the metro area, that we can run that information down. Uh, the little bit that uh, I, uh, I, I don't believe that the, the two individuals with the same last name are related, so I can share that. You were next. And, uh, I, just to clarify on what you can share, um, you guys are praising this employee. This was indeed a maid who saw guns in at least one of these two rooms? Um, we're, we're praising the entire staff, uh, the leadership that helped uh, make sure that their, their entire team was trained. Uh, the right way and everybody uh, in the hotel that took action. So we're not specifically pointing out uh, an individual or two. Uh, credit goes to the entire hotel, the staff, and the forethought uh, that, that the ownership and uh, the management have to make sure that, uh, that, that folks have uh, the, the courage, that they know how to bring this type of information uh, forward. So we cannot commend uh, high enough the entire staff for the action that they took, and then we certainly are proud of the Denver team, the Denver safety team, and our federal partners on resolving something like this safely. That's a big deal. Um, it's a big deal to be able to, to, to take uh, four individuals in custody when we're talking about uh, weapons, and to do that safely without incident is a big deal. And I'll just add that uh, I did speak with the owner of the hotel, and he shared with me that we train our staff for this very type of situation on what to do when they see something suspicious, and it, it played out. So again, we appreciate uh, that type of leadership and forethought from uh, leadership of, an, of uh, a hotel uh, in our city, and encourage other hotels, if you haven't done so, to train your staff accordingly as well. You were next. Yeah, this is for the chief. Can you share the extent of what was recovered in those two rooms that led to some of these charges? Uh, no, it would be inappropriate to, to you know to give a, a detailed rundown. I think what we've shared that there were four individuals that have been arrested. We have recovered some weapons, some uh, firearms, and we also uh, recovered a significant amount of narcotics. Um, we uh, will continue uh, this investigation. Uh, follow the leads that present themselves to try to identify uh, to the extent possible uh, any uh, type of uh, motive, idea, any, any thoughts that people might have. Uh, we want to try to you know, figure that out. 
So is it fair to say you don't have a motive right now? Uh, we are doing a uh, ongoing uh, investigation, so uh, the answer to, to that is uh, we'll continue to, to review uh, as much as possible that we're in the very early stages of this and uh, we will go where the investigation takes us without making any kind of assumptions whatsoever. Last question is the photojournalist. I see you there. Man. They are Colorado residents and what is the nationality of them? Nationality suspects. Uh, we have uh, uh, a mix uh, of, of individuals uh, here, both uh, a, a mix of individuals. Uh, we, we generally don't get You never know how, I would say this, you never know how someone identifies. I myself am Afro-Latino. Most people would say I'm just a black man. So <laughs> we never want to just assume. <laughs> uh, but a, a mix of uh, cultures are, are represented. Okay, well, you really get the last question. Okay, um, I just was, I, I know you can't tell us a lot, but I'm just confused on the two rooms. Were there guns in both rooms or one room? Was there a person in one room, all four there? What can you tell us about the two rooms? Yet, yet again, another uh, great question, and, I, and I'm gonna you know, go up to the line without jeopardizing the investigation. Uh, evidence was recovered in both rooms. Uh, individuals were arrested in, in both rooms, and that's the best I can, I can give you on this. Um, there's one more uh, quick little tidbit. I think the mayor uh, covered it, right? Uh, it's not an accident uh, that the staff here did the right thing. We cannot be more thankful for that. I also want to point out our, our federal partners because it was yes. only a month or two ago when we actually had this podium slid over and we were saying the exact same thing, that uh, see something, say something. When we were talking about crime prevention, as the, the mayor indicated, our goal is to prevent a crime from occurring in the first place, to prevent uh, any kind of harm to our community from taking place. And so our federal partners, uh, our Crime Stoppers partners, we were talking about this months ago. And uh, we want to encourage folks, not only through All-Star Weekend, but moving forward, if uh, they see something, that they say something, and together we can keep our community safe. Appreciate your time today. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.